talk about holding before you sneeze, that's not even half of the normal function for the pelvic floor. So having the pelvic floor be volitional strength where it's like, oh, I have to sneeze, let me hold it as your treatment for the pelvic floor makes no sense to me. So secondly, no one wants to think about doing a Kegel before bursting out into laughter. So you're sitting at dinner with your friends and somebody says something hysterical, you know, the kind of offhanded laugh where you squirt water out of your nose. Yeah, that's the kind of laugh where you're not gonna think about tightening your pelvic floor first. Um, and those are the best kinds of laughs because we all need those for stress reduction. I think I'm due for one of those soon. Uh, so you don't want to have to think about your pelvic floor when you're doing things, when you're bending over the crib to pick up your child. I know that's when my pelvic floor feels weak, is when I'm having to bend over and then pick up something heavy. Um, so bursting into laughter, sneezing, coughing. And if you think about the pelvic floor as stabilizing and holding your SI joint, you're not going to think, oh, let me tighten my pelvic floor. Let me hold my pelvic floor when I step off this curb to hold my SI joint. Um, so there are lots of things that cannot be under uh, volitional control. So babies don't think about their pelvic floors. We train them, we potty train where to go to the bathroom, not how to hold it. So I don't know if you've ever thought about that. I and mean, we have a lot of moms in this group. Not everyone is a mom, but we have a lot of moms. And when you think about potty training, you're not trying to teach your kid how to hold it. You're trying to train them where to go to the bathroom and hopefully not in the tub like my child likes to do. Oh gosh. <laughs> so you're trying to teach them where to go to the bathroom. So what makes people lose this automatic control that they develop as babies and how do we get it back? So that's the big issue that I see with treatment of the pelvic floor is, is we're not trying to fix it. I feel like we're trying to put a bandaid on. All right, okay, here, do some kegels. Try to think about tightening your pelvic floor before you sneeze, Band-Aid. Before you cough, Band-Aid. Here, so work on tightening your pelvic floor. During the day, do those kegels at stoplights. You're just putting Band-Aids on something. Kids aren't doing kegels. They're not, babies aren't thinking about tightening their pelvic floors. They're doing deep squats. They're rotating. They're playing in a squatting position. They're doing things that naturally turn on and activate their pelvic floor. So it seems to me like to fully treat this issue, we need to take a step back and address what makes our pelvic floors become automatic so that they use their entire role in our bodies um, instead of just trying to put a Band-Aid on it um, and have preemptive uh, control. So this is what I want this class to cover. I want you guys to all be dynamically strong and have pelvic floors that function for everything from sneezing to coughing to jumping off a curb to great sex. I mean, everything. I want you to have a super strong, automatically firing pelvic floor. All right, let's take a look at the anatomy. It's fun stuff. I love anatomy. Um, we're not going to go crazy on this, but, you know, I kind of like to see a picture and, and have ideas of where things are. Um, they're great anatomy pictures online, so feel free to check those out. But if we look at the coccygea, so when you think about pelvic floor, you think coccygeus levator ani, okay? So here's your coccygeus. This is the front of your pelvis. This is the back. This is the base of your spine, okay? So this is your sacrum. This is your coccyx. This is your lumbar spine. All right, so when we look at the pelvic floor, the coccygeus muscle sits here, the levator ani muscle, which is made up of the iliococcygeus and pubococcygeus right here, and think about this as your sling of muscles, all right? So it's a sling of muscles that sits on the bottom of your pelvis. Now you can at least have a reference to the names. There won't be a quiz, I promise. All right, so these muscles, I think this is pretty cool. So if you look here, you have your coccyx and you have your sacrum. Now, these muscles come in and they stabilize that sacrum. And that is a really, really cool thing. So I want you to think about that. So those muscles that are coming into the base of your sacrum, they're acting like little anchors or rudders to your sacrum. So I like to think about it as the base of your spine, right? The bottom of your spine is like this, this squirrely ship, all right? How many of you guys have ever been on a sailboat, like a little small sunfish, and you've pulled up the center rudder or the back rudder? I mean, the thing will just skip across the water. Like it has no direction. 
So I feel like if you look at the pelvic floor muscles and the piriformis is missing right here, and I consider the pelvis piriformis one of the pelvic floor muscles. So if you look, it's missing right here. So it also acts as your base and your anchor. So all these little pelvic floor muscles are coming into the base of your spine and they're holding and stabilizing your SI joint because they're acting like a rudder or a base for the whole entire bottom of your spine. So I think that's pretty cool and I think that's not how we've been looking at the pelvic floor. We've just been looking at it as an incontinence issue, which I mean, it is that, but we need to look at it so much more. So with me being an orthopedic physical therapist, I treat a lot of SI joint pain. So it's having me uh, take a different approach and look at the pelvic floor. Now, tightness and asymmetry. So imagine just the right side of your pelvic floor is tight. You can see how this would take the pelvic floor and take the pelvis and the sacrum and it would pull things kind of off or out of alignment. So you would have different alignment from one side to the other, which would cause your hips to move funny, which would cause an imbalance and an SI joint problem, maybe back pain, maybe hip pain. It'll cause lots of different uh, things to go wrong in the pelvis. So I've seen lots of asymmetries within the pelvic floor. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So any questions before I move on um, about the anatomy?